date of birth generator. Oh. You were born in the year 07, in the last year of the commune of Revachon, right before it fell in the old military hospital on the ground floor, where people usually came to die during a snowstorm. The revolution had about one year left to go, and the fires were still burning bright. There were explosions in the blizzard. This was 44 years ago. You are 44 years old. The bloating might never leave your face, but beneath it, you still have some years. You still have some hope. So what do I get? Negative difficulty to all physique passes. Oh, I'm learning cat for logic raised to four. I don't know that I need that one. Because I think I have... Yeah, it, it lowers my physique passives, which... You know, could use it, but I could also just put points into stuff. I forget this one. Womty Domty Dom Center. I lose suggestion. It's Wednesday evening and something heinously exciting is underway. People have gathered beneath the billowing roof of an oddly shaped trophy building, sipping wine and exchanging opinions. 29-year-old Wonder Twins, Guy and Keith Jost, are the stars of the show with their bomber jackets and white sneakers. Head curators of this art exhibition is the Womty Dom D Dominist event of the year. And all the cool kids have RSVP'd. Where are you if you're not here? I also... Searchlight Division? Alright. I'll keep what I have for now. We gotta go find our gun. And talk to Joyce again. Let's see if he has anything left to say. Oh, hey, mister! I'm not gonna bother you with a long greeting, just like we talked about before. Mr. Everett doesn't really want me to talk to people about union guys. But who did you want to talk about? <laughs> so I asked, I said, you seem to know everyone. Uh, I want to ask about someone. Tell me about Manana. He's a union man through and through. Good guy. He's very calm, laid back, doesn't do much, talks to Everett sometimes. Honestly, I don't know what he does for us, but it must be important because everybody likes him. Yes, they do. I think that's what he does. He makes everyone feel a little better. What about this Edgar guy you keep talking about? Mr. Edgar is Mr. Everett's brother. He looks a bit younger, he does, but a very smart fellow. Very smart fellow indeed. He's away on some union business. Not even in Revershaw, they say. Let's not interrupt him. All kinds of places he visits. Him and his brother both do when they're on a vacation. Right now, it's Mr. Everett's turn to look after the Union. But last year, he spent a whole winter in South Africa. <laughs> Left with the first autumn rains and didn't come back before the trees were green again. <laughs> uh, tell me about Measurehead. Whoa, he's really something. <laughs> he doesn't talk much to me usually, but when he does, I don't really understand most of what he's saying. Actually, I don't think he would like me running my mouth about him like that. <laughs> he suddenly falls quiet. Once he said he's a dragon to this mob fellow who came picking a fight with some union men. Huh. I think he really believes Jean Luc was a dragon because he ran right off. Another time he almost killed another guy, but I shouldn't talk about that. What about Titus? Oh, Titus is a long shoreman through and through. He was born on a boat, they say. His veins are probably filled with salt water, I tell you. <laughs> nice, friendly sort old Titus is. He's probably one of those rare specimens who are born when two drunk seamen stumble on top of each other on the deck amidst a storm so violent it flings whales around. Oh, uh, tell me about Everett? Uh, I'd best not. I mean, I could, but I don't think Mr. Everett would like it very much. You better ask him yourself, mister. If anything, the ever-present smile on Leo's face gets even warmer. Tell me about Renee. The night guard. Ooh, he's a peculiar fellow. He's the strong, silent type, you could say. He looks at the guard booth on the wall. We talk all the time, but I don't really know much about him. 
He plays Patank with my old human studies teacher, Mr. Martin, down at the plaza. I think he's the only fellow who actually knows old Rene. They lived on the same street their entire lives, even dated the same girl on and off for as long as I can remember. <laughs> Strange fellows. Mr. Martin was always real nice to me in school. I remember once. Hold on. Gaston was your human studies teacher? Mr. Martin, yes. Don't really remember much about him. I was just a boy back then. Huh. Okay. Uh, sure, mister. I got nothing else to talk to you about. Interesting conversations. Okay. Um, I looked online to figure out what we're supposed to do with these traps. And, because I was like, we talked to Kuno and Kuno denied whatever. And I probably should have figured it out, but I need to go look in Kuno's shack. You're back before the cargo container. Its draw has not lessened hmm. since you were last here. Hmm. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. I don't know what to do for you. But I will figure it out. Do you have anything to say? So, how you- You've been in there, he means. Talked to the boss man, too, probably. Oh, he wants to know how we liked the harbor. Um... Labor Utopia. Complete shit. Yeah, uh, how did you like our harbor? It's nice enough, I guess. It's but a rest area on the path leading across open plains. He notes solemnly, then turns to you, a wide smile adorning his face. Right. You talk to the boss, eye to eye, like men of the plain. If you have any more questions, I'm set to talk. Who do you think killed the hangman? The mercenary, eh? Who could have killed him? That's indeed the question. Why even do such a thing? He shakes his head solemnly. Everett says Titus Hardy and his boys killed him. That's so. I haven't heard anything about that. But if that's true, well, he was an enemy combatant. The man twirls his mustache around his finger. What does that mean? He was an agent of the opposition, attempting to undermine our honorable efforts. Were you involved in this? I ain't the murdering type, but that's just me. Large organizations like our union have all sorts of men, with all sorts of skills. He believes the Hardy Boys could have done it. Understood. This has been of limited use. Still, thank you. No problem. I wish the best to you in your search. Sure, I'm glad it's not my search. Takes a sip from his flask. Good talking to you. Huh. All right, Kuno. Is there anything left to find here? Can't even. What do you see? Our odd soul wasn't in the back of the whirling. I don't know. They're about the same size. Not the same boots, no, but they could be the same person. No horizontal boot prints. Whoever walked in the Whirling's pinball workshop didn't walk here. No, these prints are pretty standard. The ones in the dust looked custom. Or maybe they're just a foreign design. It's a boot print, whatever the case. Okay. Ooh. There's a circle back here. Sound of melting snow dripping off the roof, something. <laughs> it's crawling with locusts in here. All around you, the hisses and chirps of locusts fill the musky air. The earthen floor of the shack has been shaped into mounds of mud dotted with little holes for windows. Like skyscrapers, spires of dirt and sand rising. Accommodations for their insectoid inhabitants? Well, detective, it appears you've solved the case. The lieutenant looks around, writes something in his notebook, and turns to you. Of the locusts. For the missing locust case, which is a subcase of the imaginary insect case. So at least that's going well. <laughs> Jeez, Kim. <laughs> Precisely what I was thinking. Yes. I feel we are nearing a real breakthrough. You think the insulin Indian phasmid is nearby? <laughs> if anything, the presence of the locust points to the opposite. 
The Phasmi did not take the bait from the traps. It was Kuno. The Phasmi doesn't exist. But what do I know? Use your powers of deduction. You knew the magic bug was nowhere near here. The Phasmid is impairing your judgment. All right, we should talk to Kuno. I'll let you handle the Kuno side of things. You are doing just fine. Fuck, does Kuno care? I know you took the locust from the traps the cryptozoologist set up. Yeah, Kuno took the bugs. So what? Uh... So it wasn't the Phasmid. A wave of disappointment washes over you. You say you don't care about bugs, then you build a whole bug town. It's not bug town. It's the city of locusts. Locusts aren't just bug shit. They come out of the sky like a fucking shadow. Shit descends. Stop! She wails from behind the fence, then buries her face in her hands. Locusts coming down like a shadow. This must be the night city he mentioned when you asked him where he's been. Point at the shack, so that's Night City? Yeah, local city. City of rage. City of lights. There's a tug of war over the name of his fantastical city. It's almost too big for his imagination. The girl forces herself to watch again, the corners of her eyes twitching from discomfort. City of rage sounds like a cool place. Kuno, oh, the pig wants to help you. Oh, that's how lame it is. Please just don't say you're an artist. Maybe I am an artist. You hear that, everyone? I'm a fucking artist now. He pushes his chest out. Did he just say I? Kuno usually calls Kuno Kuno. Um, I'm not going to call attention to it. That's great, Kuno. It's cool to make art. Oh, my God, <laughs> Kuno. He's going to make you totally lame in, like, three seconds. Don't let him, Kuno. Yo, fuck you, see. Kuno can be what Kuno wants to be. Kuno's his own man. Kuno's free. He tears at the buttons of his shirt, trying to rip them open. They don't give way. Kuno made himself into Kuno. Kuno can make himself into anything. Kuno can make himself into a pig if he wants. Kuno can make himself into a f Kuno doesn't give a shit. But don't make yourself into a pig, Kuno. You'll have to take me away. A laden silence fills the yard. In it, you hear snow melting, dripping from the eaves. Someone closing a window. That depends on the choices you make. Me and Kuno have discussed this. I promise I won't do that. Or say nothing. Yeah, I'm not... Uh, yeah, I'm not going to take you away. I don't believe you! She disappears entirely behind the fence. For once, the boy is lost for words. He turns completely red now, with splotches of white beginning to appear across his face. Mm, what does the city of locusts mean? It don't mean anything. It's shit. Kuro just likes to focus. Kuno likes to concentrate on shit, build shit when he's zipping hard. Fuck. Turns his face up to the heavens. Pig, you really shouldn't have fucked with Kuno City. Now it's all fucking lame. No, oh, I didn't want to mess with it. Can you stop taking locusts from the traps? The cryptozoologists are trying to find something very important, and those locusts are bait. I don't give a shit. I don't need the locusts anyway. Shit is all lame now. C was right. He turns toward the fence. The girl's face appears again, above the fence, just long enough to make eye contact with Kuno. She doesn't know whether to be glad because Kuno is finally convinced of the lameness, or more worried because of his continued use of the first person singular. Kuno is Kuno, not I. What's going to happen to the locusts? Kuno's going to let the fucking locusts die. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess that's settled then. The fuck are they trying to catch anyway? With the traps? The Insulindian Phasmid. Huh. He mutters to himself. He recognizes the name. You know what the Insulindian Phasmid is? Bitches think Kuno doesn't know shit. The fuck out of here. 
Kuno's tired of this shit. There's silence between the two children. They're not saying anything to each other, nor looking in each other's direction. I think I broke them. Are you okay? Fuck, does Kuno care? Okay, I'm, I'm done. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Okay, I'm sorry. I feel like it broke something and I don't like it. Hello, officer. I think I almost have it. A new trap design, that is. I know you're skeptical, but I have a good feeling about this. I had a chat with this kid, Kuno. He promised to stop stealing the locusts. So it was just a child. Purses his lips, crestfallen. Thank you for telling us, sweetie. This is good news, right? It means we can try again. She turns to smile gently up at her husband. She acts chipper, but something's changed in her tone. A hidden worry. Something is secretly gnawing at her confidence. It's not this Kuno kid or the missing locusts. It's something else. Does she not want her husband to go back out there? Or is she doubting her own story? Yeah, you're right. We just need to restock the empty trap. Then we'll need to inspect the traps one more time. And then maybe we can. <coughs> oh no. Darling, I told you to take it easy. You're getting sick. Maybe it's time to go home. I can check the traps again. You're right, you're right. We can come back next season when it's warmer. I'm really feeling this is costing me time on my main investigation. Nope, I disagree. It's not worth risking your health. You should call it in and go home. I'd offer to help. I have my own things. Maybe I can restock the traps for you. We've come too far to quit. I'm going to restock the traps. Except enthusiastically. We are getting really carried away with this, aren't we? No! <laughs> Fine. It's better than having these people get pneumonia on the coast. But after this... He wants to see this tale through as much as you. Aww. Otherwise, he'd have stopped this already. But he cannot let it drag out after this. Kim is secretly on board. Really? It's too much, officer. <coughs> what Morel means is we're grateful for your help. She nods to her husband. Here's a fresh fractured locust. Oh. They should slide right down the funnel. And thank you again. We would definitely mention you, should this lead to a discovery. I'm not talking co-discovery, of course, but... Uh... Wow. Co-discovery? <laughs> You'd be famous. Electrochemistry! you show them all. This does tingle the pleasure center. Alright, I'll get going. Should I talk to her? Oh, hello, sweetie. No. Okay, her main concern was for her husband, so that answers that question. Okay! Just, there it is. The locusts aren't doing all too well, but they're still in there. This isn't the empty trap. That must have been another one. Oh. Okay. I thought maybe I'd have to recheck traps, but apparently it just wants me to refill the one that's empty. Oh, was it this one? This was the last one. Oh, right here. To be sure to find. Morel's trap stands empty, just like the boathouses around it. The wind ruffles your sweaty hair. Release the locusts into the empty trap. The locusts, dazed from being transported, slowly begin to acclimate to their new surroundings. They're not really going to get the chance to get comfortable here. Good. Now that's done. When do you think we will return to our impending apocalypse of a murder investigation? We're doing it as we're doing it. Don't answer that. <laughs> it was a rhetorical question. Okay. Okay. Um, who do I talk to about you? Yo, man. What's on your mind? I found the radio transceiver. So your cop ways came through again. Impressive. Let's see what you got. Use the perfectly adequate transceiver. I wasn't going to look for a fancy one. I found this in an office by the harbor. An ordinary white collar transceiver joins the hardcore underground. Yeah, this should do nice. I guess I could have searched for a much fancier transceiver. All right, Lil Farah, we're ready to do this. I have to warn you, though, 
Once we commit, there's no stopping until we've seen it all the way through. No pauses, no second chances. This is our shot. You got it. So any cop prep you got to do, you do it now. We'll wait if we have to. Didn't you say we need some kind of power supply? Don't sweat that. Egg found something down near the water lock. Some maniac abandoned the perfectly good power source. That maniac is obviously you, which makes the power source your half-sunken Caprice 40. Oh, you mean the motor carriage that had crashed into the bay? That explains why it was covered in cop colours. Old things totaled. But lucky for us, the engine on the back is still perfectly good. All, right. All I have to do is run a cable from the engine up the Centaur Man's Memorial. It won't last forever, but it should buy us enough time to get you synced up with a big bag. What kind of cop prep do I need to do? How should I know? It's up to everyone to know their own needs. Whatever keeps your body and soul in top working condition. Okay. At the very least, you should make sure you're wearing a good pair of gloves. Oh, for interfacing, okay. Personally, I'm going to make sure I've got a steady supply of prep tired, Andy. Interesting. All right, I should get some things in order first. Do what you have to do. We're not going anywhere. Hardcore church! Ooh. Nowhere else to go! Like Egg said. Okay. Wompty Dumpty Dum Center. Oh, yeah. You're at home, stupid cop. Not with the art crowd. You hate them. Everyone hates them. Even they hate themselves. It's nauseating. An industry built on sprezzatura and sparkling wine. And, let's be honest, tax evasion schemes. The Wompty Dumpty Dom Center is the heart of this unholy symbiosis of aesthetics and tax optimization. And now that you've internalized it, you can have a piece too. Negative two suggestion? Encyclopedia passive. <sighs> oh, wow. 10 XP for encyclopedia. How often does encyclopedia pop up for us? But I would have to have, have it pop up 20 times. Mm, I don't know. Mm. 20 times to offset the negative two suggestion, which is, And I need suggestion for that, uh, for that date I want to go on. It's nice! Forget it. If I'm constantly passing, uh, encyclopedia checks. Alright, let's go talk to it again. Be close. So I thought I was gonna have to go through this once and like find the right. Apparently, you have to go through this a couple times. True, hard, full of car. So I just went online and looked up. I'm like, what am I not doing? Anyway, so we want to say nothing. Hard car. Say nothing. Hard car to the mega. Say nothing. Internally coherent. Say nothing. All car. All right. Yeah. Keep saying nothing. He furrows his brow as his very large head traces the sublime invisible movement of the music in the very real air of the church. Hardcore! Ah! He lets out an agonized roar over the feeblish, obviously not too hardcore beat below, really. I'm a little worried it isn't. The question is, what is the question? I didn't ask you a question. But there was a question? Alright, so we got that before. The ending didn't matter. Be close! True, hard, full of car! Alright. One, two, three, four, five. So say nothing five times. Hard car! Hard car to the mega! 
internally coherent. All call! All right! Yeah! He furrows his brow as his very large head. Hardcore! Ah! So now I say so hardcore. Is it though? Say it is. But is it? I mean, really. The question, what is the question? No, but seriously, I'm a bit worried it isn't. He frowns and starts bobbing his head back and forth once more. The skin on your back is crawling. For a second, you can't even hear the music anymore. There is a hawthorn tree on Rue de Songe's Lane, right next to the canal. Don't be alarmed. Everything is okay. He isn't actually worried. Everything is still super hardcore. What he probably means is, it could be even more so. I don't know how I was supposed to crack that. I guess I needed to parrot it back at him. Can you? Oh, well, before I do that, how do you like it in the church? Yeah! Back on the case! No disgrace! Bring it down to party play! He pumps his fists in the air. The first page of the second chapter! His voice echoes all around the Grand Hall. Could it be? Maybe for him. You only have a chapter or two left in you. Last of the penultimate, more like. You said you were worried. What do you think's wrong with the music? There's nothing wrong with it. I'm still in love with the hardcore. He turns pensive all of a sudden. Sometimes I just feel like anodic music is in its infancy, you know? For example, take this Arno van Eyck jam I've been pumping for the last months and will continue pumping for the rest of 51. Isn't something holding it back from being hyper? He thinks for a moment, then his expression clears. It's like it's only ultra. I think it's super hardcore, but you're right. It's not hyper hardcore. If anything, it sounds a bit proto, like it's not fully formed yet. You might be a moribund alcoholic and a failed cop, but you are pretty certain a thing cannot be both proto and hardcore. All right, so I'm going to say it's proto and not hardcore at all? Wow! Culture cop! <laughs> For a moment, you almost think he's going to put his hand down, but that would be ludicrous. I think you might be right, but how could it become hardcore then? I know it in my heart, but cannot think it in my head. If this is not hardcore, how could anything be? Sounds suspiciously like a question. I thought the question was, what is the question? Try to think if anything could make it harder core. I'm the police? I just remembered something? I can't help you with this right now. What would make it harder core? What? Guys, there's something happening in his head. Think even harder? Oh yeah, he's doing it. But you're not. This is almost certainly a matter that surpasses the limits of reason. My imagination fails me. I know, so does mine. He laughs and shakes his head. Okay, but what is the question? No, this is the answer. I just remembered I'm the police. Uh-huh. The young man is bursting with anticipation. Nothing, maybe in the police isn't going to help us. It's more likely to hinder us. Oh. <laughs> uh, I guess I need to go do something else, something extra. Yeah! Maybe your body can tell you what Arno's jam is missing to make it harder core. This is physical instrument. Are you a thought reader? No nation, but trans nation. No war, but class war. Does that mean you're a thought reader? Don't be a lunatic. Of course he isn't. Germania just yells random things. Odds are, sooner or later, one of them will come off as thought reading. Yeah! Revachon imperative! Unless you were thinking Revachon imperative right now. Anyway. I've had a similar thing happen with eggs yelling. I know what you mean. I was thinking Revachal Imperative lie. You're right, I wasn't thinking that. No, I was thinking Revachal Imperative. That's fucked up, man. Lying like that. <laughs> and a cop, too. So you're not a thought reader, you're a communist? He's not a communist. It's just something he likes to yell. He picked it up from a tape jockey at the Palisseum. She was a communist, though. Yeah! With the rebel yell! Tell me something else. Yeah! 
Is your real name Jermaine? Jacquard Hardcore! Jermaine Egghead! Um, basically, yes it is. <laughs> Why are there lungs on your belt buckle? Lungs are for love! Why would lungs be for love? We know this. When Dolores Day was anointed innocence, her lungs started glowing through her body. For the world loved her, and she loved it back. Yeah! Why wouldn't they be? Are the lungs not the place where you hold the breath of your soul? Well, I guess that makes sense. Love! In a woman's lungs! Lonely as I am, I'm not afraid. This strange, damaged feeling grows on and on, because I've never loved someone like you before. A dopamine surge oh. accompanies the words. It feels like electricity flowing down your scalp, dissipated into your neck. Feels good, like a spark of life in that moribund sponge you call your body. Can you route Sonya's signal through your speakers? To the mega! Yeah! I can root it through auxiliary! What kind of a cable does she use? 3.5 or 4.5? It's a 3.5. It's on the ground. Point to it. Oh! She uses 3.5. Yeah. The auxiliary lining is 4.5 millimeter. These two don't mix. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> We're going to be in this church forever. <laughs> Don't worry, I have an adapter for it right here. Except you don't. He searches for the cable on the ground. Oh, and picks it up, looking at the jack. Hang on. This is a 4.5. We're all good, people! With a grin, he sticks the plug into the auxiliary inline. You hear a satisfying click. Great! Someone got through to him. Okay, let's get it all set up. Can we turn the music off, please? Can we turn off the music? Everybody! Everybody! Don't panic! I'm going to turn off the Arno for just a sec for a special scheduled event. He clicks a switch on the mixer. The Arno will be back, but we're doing something else for one moment. All right, go tell her that Egghead is ready to rave to her tunes, and then I'll turn off the music. Okay, let me check out my physical instrument. All right, here comes the night. Physical instrument. I could maybe up it one more time. Delorean Church, the place to be. Make the noise, my church people. Vibrations thump through your blue soul. The music sounds much better in the church. Hmm. A hawthorn tree on Rue de Sanchez Lane. He stands on stage behind a table. Not the other real deck is empty. Cables, you know it in your lungs where the pressure should vibrate. In your heart that's alone. And in your solar plexus where the hits should land. So does every chordate animal. Needs more bass. What? The young man makes a sudden move like he's about to turn the volume down, but that would be ridiculous. In a melody, a good melody is what makes the song really stick so that you can't get it out of your head anymore. Point to your head. Wow, okay. We should start with the melody. But where would we get that stuff from? Ah, <laughs> uh, I was thinking you would know nowhere. I'm going to become some sort of adnotic cop too. I've got enough copo types already. I'm not going to become some sort of adnotic cop too. <sighs> I, I was thinking you'd know. I'm sorry. I don't know anything about adnotic music. I'm just the party boy. I get the people going and say it's hardcore. He feels ashamed. He can't be of more service to the future of dance music. Now look into it in an official capacity. It's up to the police to make the beats go harder. The young man falls silent with appreciation. He even tries to contain his smile, as if it could hinder your investigation. Basically, what you need to find here is a tape with some banging music on it, so that Egghead could use it to remix Van H's jam. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe that street talker across the pawn shop has got some tapes to sell. That's just an idea. There is a hawthorn tree on Rue de Soldier's know, Lane, I know. right next to the canal. A reel of magnetic tape is caught in its branches, like bronze ribbons blowing in the wind. Oh, so this is the tape we need? Or... Rue de St. Lane, I've been there. Oh, I know! I know this! I can tell you where it is! 
St. G is the boulevard before the canal bridge. The one that takes you to the whirling in rags in the industrial harbour. It's got the lanterns and the... I knew that! I could have said that! And the mosaic sidewalk. But it's all blocked with that stupid traffic jam right now. Anyway. It feels... So am I not going there? It feels cold. Does it? He looks around looking for the cold. Shake it off. Anyway, that's all yours to figure out, Copman. Copman! I have a tape with me. Maybe you could use it? Tape! Yeah! Spins the tape until the space escape! Yeah! Give him the door gunner mega mix. I feel bad about this. Alright! He snatches the tape from your hand, attaches it to the empty reel slot. One hand on his headphones, he listens to the audio. Then shaking his head, he says, No! No, no! This is gonna make people scared! He has. Keep it positive! Keep the love in the house! He hands the tape back to you. Okay, I'll go find some more tapes for you. Yeah! So there's one in a tree somewhere, or there's not one in a tree somewhere. Oh, hey, man. It's good to see you. Higher quality audio. Sava Fuer. Goodbye, officer. I thought I tried to, um... I put a point to Sava Fuer. I thought I tried this and it like did nothing. <sighs> yeah, I've got no luck on that. Um Okay. Okay, so we do have to find the tree. Do I wanna do that first? I think I do. I think I do wanna do that first. So this tree? Hawthorn tree, on Rue de Sange's oh. name. Bronze-colored ribbons of magnetic tape are caught in its branches, fluttering in the breeze. Just like promised, you've stood here for what seems like eons, guzzling the sickly fumes of lorries and carriages. Piss off, nature punch the tree, good Hawthorn. Pat the tree. Patting the tree reveals a small sticker which has almost been worn to oblivion. It reads, RCM Emergencies Desk. Number 8102. Underneath a slogan, Mankind, be vigilant. You tree hugging pansy. <laughs> I need interfacing, it said. So let's go ahead. Do I need to put points in? Eh, interfacing's fine. Alright. Interfacing. The gnarled hawthorn tree on Rue de Sanger's oh. lane. A wintry breeze with slow and deliberate motions, pulling. Bending and unraveling, you manage to extricate the magnetic tape from the branches. It curls up into a mess inside your pocket. If only you could find a way to re-spool it, so that you could hear what's on the tape. Maybe Roy from the pawn shop can help you with this. What's the tape for? The lieutenant looks at the mess in your hands. Only after you've successfully cleaned up the branches does the curiosity get him. It's for Egghead. I promise to make his... Van Eyck's jam hit a bit harder. Maybe this tape can help. How? It's broken and unspooled. Do you think your new buddy knows how to fix it? He has to use the master ceremonies. Apparently we're gonna ask Roy. I think at least one of the Reavers would know how to fix a broken tape if they want to set up a nightclub. You could also get it fixed at the pawn shop across the street. We shouldn't waste our time. He looks at his wristwatch a little impatiently. Good idea. He might have the tools. The tape projector in the pawn shop uses similar tape. Don't punch a hawthorn tree, it has thorns. Leave. That, that's just a bad... Bad day waiting to... That, that you do to yourself. Inside. Hey, Roy. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Do you know how to fix this? Show him the bundle of magnetic tape. You mean raise poly? Yeah, I do, but... Could you do it, please? This is important. I need to be able to play this tape for someone. But I'm not some Mr. Fix-It. I'm a pawnbroker. If you want to pawn the tape, sure. Although it looks pretty... worthless. Just explain why you need this so much. He's bound to understand. 
you tinker with film tapes all the time isn't this the same worthless it's not ro ro worthless this could be the next big deal for the local dance music scene let's ask the first one no it's different those film tapes actually mean something to me but this is just a worthless bundle of old tape. How do you know if you can't listen to it? This is the next big thing. Huh? What do you mean? He slowly taps his fingers on the counter. Do you know that old church down the coast? Yes. What about it? I help some young ravers turn this place into a nightclub and they play these weird neo-disco beats there. Is it any good? The music, I mean. Not very. I need to funk it up. No, that's the thing. You can't believe how unbelievably thin the beat is. There's nothing to it. No bass. It just goes bazoop, bazoop, bazoop. But this tape could make it hardcore. Man, you're really invested in this. He looks at the bundle of tape in front of him. It shimmers under the shop's dazzling light show. Okay, I'll help you out. It's going to take a moment, though. So just sit back and relax. You take some time to look around the store. The play of visuals all around the pawn shop is mesmerizing. Suddenly, Roy turns back to you with a reel of tape in his hand and coughs. That took at least 15 minutes. Yeah, it was. Respooling isn't that difficult. Although I had to mend the tape in a few places. Anyhow, it's yours now. He slides the tape closer to you on the countertop. Well, thank you for the help. Yeah, my pleasure. I'll do what I can for true passion projects. Just try not to use this tape for negative vote on a mission. <laughs> Take responsibility. Okay. Okay, thank you. Ah, oh, This game. I'm enjoying this game. There was a review of this game I was... Uh, watching and the reviewer said that once the game got off the main mystery they kind of lost interest and I disagree like I, I find I love side quests <laughs> I love side quests side quests are great and it ties into like Grevishal trying to make this an okay place all right, let's fix this tape. I like helping out the people, that's all. I don't need to solve the big murder mystery. <laughs> words echo magnificently throughout the nave. I found this real tape, maybe you can use it? Yeah! Remix time! Tape goes here, into deck B. He clicks a switch, the tape starts spinning. A hand on his ear. He listens to the audio through his headphones and shouts. Wow! Did you get this from Arno himself? His face lights up with delight. A great excitement is bubbling to the surface within him. This is big. No, I actually... F well, what do you mean? Listen, I'm just going to show it to you. Ready? Yep. Changes it up. Wow! Here's that! It's a science match perfectly! Now, if only we had the beat for the full assault, it would be unbelievably hyper! What is this? It's good. How did you guys do that? I just found a random tape. And Egghead is incredibly good at remixing. Ooh, it's uncanny how well it all goes together. Something must be going on here. Yes, but what if Van Ake based his remix on some forgotten local melody, uh, like a folk song, and you just found the original piece that inspired him to create this jam? That would explain why it fits so well. Nah, to me it sounds like classic Van Ake. I don't think he needs any inspiration from folk songs. Maybe he lives in Martinez and just threw away part of his song because he thought it wasn't good enough? I think it's just happenstance. Chaos in action. Contingencies of our limited existence. That and Egghead's fantastic talent. He nods to his friend behind the turntables. Noid's right. 
Egghead's technical talent is the key. No, this is definitely part of the same song. Something cut from it. It fits too well. Something mysterious is going on here. Andre's got it. Sounds like a local folk song. Re remixed. A sells right. Maybe Van Eyck lived around here. This is definitely his creation. I agree with Noise. Just luck. Let's go with Cell. Be how it may, if it fits, it fits. Bring up the volume. He pumps his fist in the air. What about the bass? Do you have any ideas for that? Andre looks back at you. Yeah, I remember. You said it needs more bass. You can't just leave it without a bass track. Nothing springs to my mind right now, but I'll see if I can come up with a solution. Later on down the lane. Yo, the warrior! The warrior of dance music! Don't be too hard on yourself if you don't figure it out. I think the jam's already pretty ultra. But it could be hyper, hyper hardcore! Guess this is all I have. Let's quick save. So I can't do... Good morning! Nothing yeah. else. Alright. 